Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm excited to have an opportunity to chat with you today about how we think about uh, these two worlds coming together. RPA, so using robots to be able to automate the work that happens inside of large and small enterprises and being able to bring AI capabilities into those automations so that effectively you can infuse your robots with AI skills and really unlock a whole new way to be able to uh, undertake automations within an enterprise. So. I, I promise you a few things. I'm going to give you a view of an end-to-end -end platform of how we tackle some of the challenges that you've heard today from my other esteemed colleagues as they presented different you know, capabilities around machine learning and data labeling and human loop. Um, I'll show you how uh, effectively we can bring that end-to-end -end platform together, robots both attended and unattended being used in the environment, how robots can work with humans together, to be able to get work done. And then I'm really gonna to touch on some real use cases. I think Ron made a really good point, which is uh, when we can make it real and talk about what are companies actually doing today and what are some of these practical use cases that are being solved and solved at scale, it really starts to bring it home and we can start to then envision how can we unlock some of the potential of these capabilities within our own enterprise. So I'll talk about product label intelligence and how we can use object detection and image segmentation to read labels on a product. I'll share additional information around the home uh, loan process and the wide range of documents that many banks or mortgage companies are dealing with today when we request a new loan or when we're refinancing an existing loan, how robotics and AI can make that a much more streamlined process. And then I'll land on an example in oil and gas, how a large uh, super major oil and gas company can use these capabilities to actually mine data around their competitors' activities and then uh, effectively benchmark their operations and understand how they can become superior than their competitive, uh, competitive players within the fields in which they explore and extract hydrocarbon products. So, you know, these two worlds are coming together, truly, right? Automation and AI. And it's really unleashing this whole new world of what we call hyper automation. So automation in the past and, you know, the platform that we have from UiPath has been able to automate tasks that have mostly been rules-based and that we could codify, right? Step one, step two, step three, step four. AI now introduces a new capability where things may change depending on the output of a model. If we send in uh, an input and we want to score, say for example, uh, a credit loan request for a new mortgage, we can actually determine based upon the score, perhaps a fast track that we can take that customer on to improve their journey, to be able to collect all the necessary documents to get to a, a quicker close date, uh, essentially. And so hyper automation is really the theme. How can we do things better? How can we do things faster? How can we be stronger as humans by leveraging robots that largely are doing a lot of work that we probably don't wanna do so that we can spend more time focusing in on a higher value tasks like working with customers and being able to solve uh, their challenges and get help them get more work done. Uh, won't spend too much time here. I think we're all familiar with the fact that AI is going to change the world. It already has. It's, it, it's actually, actually, these capabilities have been around for decades now. Uh, for those of you who've been started in the statistics world and with more of the regression-based models, they've evolved now to things like object detection and image segmentation like you've seen here where we can see a cat or a dog or a zebra or an elephant. Uh, we've gone one step further to make that more real within the business context of how we can actually apply object detection and image segmentation to look at product labels and ensure that the information that goes on the product label is absolutely correct, especially when it's food and beverage related products or it's a pharmaceutical product like a drug. So I mentioned the fact that AI with robots now unlocks this new possibility. Right, because models can actually return a probability value or a score or a prediction of the sentiment of somebody's request for information or a problem that they're having with our with perhaps a product or a service that we offer to them. We can now account for that uh, varying probability output or a different type of uncertainty of what what will come on the other side of a prediction, and then we can set up different routing paths for that workflow to be able to handle a customer who's happy and wants to share some information about what their experience has been like getting a new loan. And we can quickly resolve a customer's challenge if they're having some difficulties getting some documentation to be able to complete their loan, for example. So now with hyper automation, with AI, we can really take on a whole new set of automations 
that previously with the rules-based structure just simply weren't possible, right? Uh, there are many facets of our platform. Again, it is end-to-end, -end, and I'll show you facets of how we can do things like label documents, and I'll, I'll actually show you an example of labeling documents. It was a really good question that was brought up earlier. I'll talk about how we can label images uh, like we do for product labels that I'll share the use case here. And I'll actually do that in the demo. So I'm gonna go quickly from the screen content here in the presentation into actual AI Fabric up and running. But what AI Fabric allows you to do is take a model that you currently have, if you've built a Python model and you've deployed it in your environment, or we ship out of the box models that you can begin working with straight away. So a number of open source models and include things like image classification, object detection, text summarization, translation services to take a document in English and translate it into Russian or into another language as an example. And then we make it very easy for an RPA developer or a citizen developer on our platform to use our UiPath Studio product to easily drag and drop that data model or that machine learning model with data and incorporate it into a workflow. Literally drag and drop a machine learning model into a workflow and be able to benefit from interacting with that model in the way that it was designed. And then naturally, there's a lot, you've heard it today, that it's important to be able to have labeled data, models need to be trained, we need to set up varying pipelines so that we can train and score those models over time, because ultimately what we're trying to do during that whole life cycle is improve the accuracy, improve, improve the prediction results of a model so that we can effectively in our world automate more of those tasks and reduce the need for a human to be involved within the task itself. And so I'll actually share with you a really fascinating capability that we have on the product uh, platform, which allows a human to be involved in the loop uh, post labeling, actually during the session itself, where say, for example, we're looking at an email that's coming in from a customer and we want to actually retrain the model with real time data that's coming from that human loop session, we actually have a, a data feedback loop mechanism that enables this supervised learning capability. So in real time, in the, in the runtime of a process, we can take that human data and feed it back into the model automatically. It doesn't require any, any new movements of managing that data of human loop from one area to another. So AI Fabric is really that simple. Right, uh, you can today uh, leverage AI Fabric in the cloud. So we have a SaaS based service. You can go out there and I encourage you to now uh, to set up uh, an evaluation uh, instance of AI Fabric. You can begin to play with some of the functionality that I'll share with you today. Or you can deploy AI Fabric on-prem and on-prem can be for many of our banks who have very strict security requirements and are dealing with PII or healthcare companies that have HPI based information, you can run AI Fabric on-prem in a bare metal instance and completely air gapped, meaning nothing trans transfers over the firewall. All of your capabilities exist in your four walls. Or alternatively, you can take AKS or uh, you can take AI Fabric, deploy it on Azure AKS. We're working on the ability to deploy in GCP with GKE or even in Amazon to be able to deploy in the EKS environment. So you gain all the benefits of being able to effectively run AI Fabric on-prem, in the cloud, in a hybrid environment, and ensure that you're protecting the data, the integrity of the information that you're working with uh, in these models. And then as you see here, um, and I'll, I'll show you in the demo itself how we can drag and drop a workflow and a model together, but you have this decision point, that's key, right? So I mentioned where a human can actually review what the model is producing. So let's say we're extracting the data from the email and we're getting a confidence score back from the model that suggests that the extraction of the data and the sentiment that we wanted to be able to detect in the data is lower than a minimum threshold value that we set. Let's say, for example, we set that to be 85%. If the model uh, is unable to give us a confidence score greater than 85%, we want a human to be in the loop and we want the human to be able to validate what that sentiment is, correct it, and then, as I mentioned previously, we can take that human loop data and feed it back into a data set where we can retrain the model. So I promised you that I'd talk about end-to-end, -end, and I'll show you all those capabilities effectively in the demo that I do next. 
But here are some real use cases, right? I'm, I don't have a dog, I don't have a cat. Um, you know, it's a great use case and a simplified one to be able to show object detection. But for real enterprise customers, one of the challenges is product labels. And so a large company in the food and beverage organization or large pharmaceutical organizations that develop a lot of drugs uh, are required by federal regulations and by their own you know, uh, operations to ensure the integrity of the data that goes on those labels that it's absolutely correct. Everything from the brand, the brand identity, the brand statements, the information that goes into the nutrition label, the nutrition facts, the ingredients, uh, need to be managed uh, effectively for one product. And in food and beverage category in pharma, oftentimes these products can be in the order of tens of thousands of products that are used worldwide in hundreds of countries. And the labels aren't only printed once, but we have many different labels for special events, for promotions, for different type of branding and co-marketing events within markets. So RPA and AI gives us the ability to actually have a designer submit a new label for consideration to be go on to an actual product. And then we can use a robot to inspect the elements of that label using machine learning that can take the unstructured data from object boxes in an image segmentation box and be able to see, is the information on the label the same as the information for a product master sheet or a product reference sheet? And that really is fundamentally changing the way that organizations can manage this because today, without these capabilities, literally somebody is manually reviewing that label and oftentimes it's multiple people, somebody in compliance, somebody on the legal side of the business, somebody in product management, and ultimately somebody on the manufacturing floor. Automation can help uh, streamline that process and effectively read the data that's on the label and then just simply manage the exception. Where we detect an error in a label, when we compare the actual image of the label, and you can see the bounding boxes here, additional image segmentation, because things like ingredients will often have a staggered profile to them, we can effectively then uh, take each of these different information panels and then compare them to the right relative to what information should be there, right? And the examples that I'm showing here are based upon you know, public information that we've shared previously working with our clients. Where AI comes in is you can actually use now a robot to be able to automatically get the email, take the attachment, determine that it's a particular type of label for a particular type of product, in this case, IT, IT and it's for the US-based market. The robot then can automatically look up what's the corresponding product information sheet for this product, what are the nutrition facts, the calories, the protein, the ingredients, and then compare item by item what is on the label, with what's on the product reference sheet. And then AI can further detect things like errors or omissions, if an ingredient is missing in the list, if there's an error in spelling, or even in the error in the order in which this information is presented uh, can automatically be detected using automation and AI. So as an example, if you look at the architecture behind this, we have robots that automatically will listen to an email address or They'll automatically go in on a form submission on a website, automatically ingest the document, classify the document, perform an object detection uh, you, you know, model to be able to then identify the bounding boxes around the actual data that's important, extract the data from the document, and then match the data. And where we need a human to be involved, we can actually then present what we call a validation station to a human to say, hey, take a look at this. I, I think I've got everything right, is essentially what the robot is saying, coming back from the machine learning model that underpins it. But there's a confidence score back from the algorithm that's suggesting something isn't fully extracted right. And that builds more confidence in these models because we know that machine learning models aren't always perfect the first time they get trained and scored. And we do need and can benefit from a human loop who can actually make corrections in real time in the fly and feed that data back into the model to retrain it again, all without having to necessarily go back and relabel a whole new set of documents or images in a particular example. So that's one use case. The second one is financial uh, services. I mentioned it around 
the home loan process, getting a new loan, refinancing a home, lots of that going on with the Fed dropping the interest rate level and probably having the lowest interest rates, uh, at least in the U.S. market now for many, many decades, actually record levels. Um, if you know this process well, I think there's somewhere around the tune of 30 different major documents that need to be uh, intaked into an intake process and various types of data needs to be extracted from those documents, all from things like knowing who the customer is, so a driver's license or a passport, uh, being able to have information from the loan application, information about the subject property, information about the title of the property, the assessor's report to be able to verify the value of the home and make sure that the loan is correctly valued against the loan property value. And then ultimately through the close process, ensuring that all the proper documents around title transfer, deeds of trust are effectively also uh, completed so that we can get to the close event and ensure that we have all the data, all the documents, and we have all the data that we need from those documents, and we can effectively then get to a close event much quicker. So for a bank, what this means is I can get more loan throughput through my process. I have a higher quality experience for my customers who automatically benefit from this automation of extracting data, both structured and unstructured data from these different documents, and being able to uh, quickly get to a decision about a loan, a loan type, and interest rates as an example. So here, it just kind of unpacks the complexity of the process and the benefit of using robots all along the way to extract, again, unstructured, semi-structured, and structured data from these documents. Additionally, what becomes really fascinating is that because we now have this data, and this data now can be used to be able to do things like risk scoring. What's the probability that we have some fraud within our loan request portfolio and how can we then treat those potential suspects in a, a particular manner so that we can rule out fraud within the loan application base. Very important for banks to manage risk within their portfolio and leverage data coming from the actual documents to be able to bounce up a, against a risk scoring model or a fraud detection model and these types of things. Again, all capabilities that you can run in an automated environment. So what's key to this is the human loop, right? Robots interacting with humans and doing it end to end in a unified platform. And so what you're seeing here is a way that a, a robot can actually create a new work task for a human to say, hey, look at this new loan request. I think I've got everything that I need, but I want you to validate some of the data that I've extracted. So I can go in here quickly. I can assign it to myself. I can assign it to somebody else. It's very easy for me to interact with the robot. And when I'm done with my work, another robot can basically then take it after I've, say, validated a document and automatically move it to the next step in the process. So from there, here's a quick view. And again, I'm gonna pivot in about one more minute over to an actual live demo, but this is our validation station for documents. So we have both a labeling tool where you can go in and you can very easily label the data within documents, be it a home loan mortgage application or an assessor's report or uh, invoice, a purchase order, a receipt. All of those can be visually pulled up into the data labeling tool. And it's a very efficient method for somebody to go in like a business user and quickly tag the documents with the data. And our data manager tool that, that is used in that data labeling step will automatically have as an output that data go into AI Fabric so that you can uh, immediately retrain the model on that data. And so this is an example of how we use a similar tool in Human Loop, where I mentioned before, you can now bring that data labeling step into the process itself and get that supervised learning capability. Nice, easy, simple UI to use. And then finally, oil and gas, you know, quick demo here, uh, really complex problem. If you know oil and gas really well, lots of money goes into finding fields where uh, large super majors are exploring for hydrocarbon assets. They make big bets on how much product is there and they need operational excellence around the efficiency of the operations and they need to manage things like risk and events that could have a catastrophic failure of a well holes or drilling. In, in this case, we're working with the customer to be able to ingest other production report operators data. They're called drilling and completion reports that are actually public data. And this is representative of some of this data is structured, sometimes it's unstructured, and sometimes it can be in graph-based content. We can use a robot and different machine learning models to extract the unstructured data 
using something like a natural language processing algorithm or a named entity recognition model that's trained to go in and get the unstructured data. And we can extract the structured data from these documents or semi-structured using key value pair extraction techniques or table extraction techniques. What's really fascinating about this use case, and think about it, if you're not in oil and gas, what's the equivalent in your industry? For this particular company and others like them, they now can mine this data and a process today that would have required mud experts, mud engineers, production engineers, people who know what's called the AFE process, the acquisition for expenditure, have to manually go in and look at these reports and they're hundreds of pages long of every single day, every single hour events that occur in the day. We can take that process and drop it down to what was a two to two month process down to two minutes. The robot can automatically adjust the document, classify the document, extract the data from the document, put it into a data services or a data, data buckets, and then drive a Power BI dashboard as an example so that you can do some uh, competitive benchmarking around things like uptime or non-production time, transition time in operations, rig up, rig down operations, et cetera. So huge, huge competitive advantage when you can really pull together the benefits of automation and have robots automatically go and ingest these documents and really make efficient the intake process and then further benefit from machine learning to be able to extract that data from those documents and make it available in a way that makes sense for the organization. So that's it. Uh, I'm racing <laughs> because I don't want to spend too much time going through slide content. I want to show you AI Fabric in action. So AI Fabric, what you're seeing here is, is currently a cloud-based solution. So I've got a cloud endpoint that I'm going to, and I've logged into AI Fabric. So this is my own specific view. It's based upon my role and my rights and privileges that I have within my AI Fabric environment. You can see here a number of different machine learning models that I actually am managing and have deployed. Um, and it really gives a data scientist or really a citizen developer, because we're trying to make it easy for non-data scientists to basically do the same thing that data scientists do around taking these models and deploying them and retraining them and understanding how to make a model better over time. And so those are the two persona types that this type of solution solves for. The data scientist that needs the flexibility to be able to do more advanced training of models and experiment with different model types and see which one provides the best result. And once a model has actually been built, for the citizen developer, an RPA developer, somebody who hasn't been previously exposed to data scientists can go in and manage a data science uh, project. So here, for example, I've got a project. I just drilled into one of those cards, and this one happens to be my email classification project. And I have a number of different uh, assets associated with the project. I have data sets because we know that oftentimes with documents, we need to go in and label those documents to train the model to extract the data that we want from the documents. So we actually have a cool tool called data labeling. So right in AI Fabric, you can create a new instance of a labeling process and it will automatically then invoke our data labeling or data manager tool, which is presented here. And then a business user or me as a developer or a data scientist can very quickly go in and work through a series of different types of documents and use data manager to label those documents. So we just simply set up, here are the entities that we want to extract from this document. We go and then tag those data on the document with the label uh, that we've set up for it. And then we just iterate through a number of those different documents and automatically data manager will then generate the training data that will become a data set without a human basically having to connect those two steps together. So you can see here, for example, in my data sets, I have previously trained data, I have previously uh, validated data, and now this quarterly data for training, that's the new uh, data that I'm getting from, say, every three months, I want to generate some new training data for my invoice model, or in this case, new emails that are coming in with new types of products that we've launched to market, the data sets immediately available for training. So then what we can do is effectively set up a pipeline that says, okay, we wanna now take that data that we have, and we want to go back to a pre-existing model that we previously trained. So we have the ability to manage multiple versions of the model. You can see here 3.3, and then in prior instances, we have 3.0, and it will probably go all the way back at some point to 1.0. 
it will keep the different versions of the models that we've had, as well as the different training runs. So we can compare training run to training run, how well is the model improving in terms of its performance? And so the, the data scientist, or again, uh, you know, our citizen developer can go in and very quickly look at a training run. Why don't we look at this one here that previously ran? Um, and we can look at the artifacts that are automatically generated by AI Fabric. If we wanted to see the evaluation report, uh, Fabric will automatically then generate for us a view of that uh, training run and tell us essentially everything that happened during the run. Uh, how many ev evaluation data points did we have? What were the prediction data points within the data? Here are the evaluation statistics, including the accuracy, the precision, the recall, the F1 score uh, values. And then additionally, if we have a confusion matrix, in this case, we're actually extracting data from documents, we can go on a per entity basis and see the accuracy level of the model being able to extract the data from that document. So that's really important because what it allows us to do is minimize the amount of time that we spend actually labeling data and targeting our labeling activities only really on those entities that will benefit from additional labeled data. So that's really a powerful part of the platform that you have is this ability to be able to get this level of detail on a per entity basis within a document, all automatically generated every time you run a pipeline, every time you take new data up against that pipeline, AI Fabric will automatically generate that output for you. So uh, that's a really good example of uh, you know, how you can take existing models that you've deployed and manage them with pipelines and data sets and making that a really easy process for the data scientists so that they don't spend you know, so much time performing you know, really manual tasks and they can spend more time building more powerful models within the environment or we unlock that capability for the RPA developer or the citizen developer to basically learn how to do some of these activities on their own. Uh, the other thing that we do is we make it really simple to be able to deploy models. So here's an example of out of the box packages that ship with AI Fabric. We have some image analysis models. These are one click deployment models. If I want an image moderation or object detection model, I literally go here and I click it. It will tell me everything about this model, what it can do, what it expects as an input, what it generates as an output. It will tell me what model versions, if I have multiple available, and whether or not this model is retrainable. And just by clicking Submit, AI Fabric will automatically provision a container for this model, and it will then target that model within a Kubernetes infrastructure if the model requires GPU. Let's say it's a deeply layered conversational neural net, or it's a uh, RNN, right? And it's using some very deep training data or a corpus of data uh, for it, then we might target a GPU instance. That's all a data scientist needs to do to provision that model on a GPU container uh, or in a container that will be deployed in a GPU environment in your Kubernetes cluster. It's as simple as that. Um, and we have additional models. So out of the box packages for a document understanding product, Invoices is really popular, uh, also purchase orders and receipts. These are pre-trained models already labeled and already ready to work with. So you can just take an existing invoice model and uh, deploy it on the platform. In this case, we have version 4.0 of the model um, and you can begin feeding invoices to it straight away. It has 16 or 18 standard entities that automatically get extracted. It's pre-trained. You literally just build a workflow and you begin working with that model straight away. So that's AI Fabric. That's kind of the, how do I get the model? How do I deploy it? How do I manage the model? Within UiPath Studio, so this is the tool that our RPA developers use, it's really a nice, easy point and click interface, right? So now if I wanna take that email classification model and I want to incorporate it into workflow, I just simply say, here's the beginning of my workflow. I wanna initialize it, I wanna go get some emails. So I point the email to a particular email account, my Outlook point uh, Outlook on my local machine, and it will automatically adjust the emails. It will then invoke the classification model on AI Fabric. As an input, it will send the email and the text that I want it to receive. And as an output, it will actually give me the classification information for that email. So some real examples of this. Think of customer complaints, right? So here are some actual examples of emails. We've obfuscated the data. You can see it's unstructured data. So we can classify the email, 
We can use an algorithm to extract the unstructured data from this email. The robot automatically does that process and then determines the sentiment of the email and the subject matter, and then can automatically route it to a particular workflow so that customers who are happy with their experience have a different workflow and we can get that feedback to people in the business and people who are having a challenging experience with our product. Similarly, that can be triaged very quickly by a customer response team. So being able to incorporate these models into a workflow is as simple as that. I'll give you another example here. This is the actual uh, a model that I created for reading license plates. Object detection model, it will automatically read the digits. The uh, RPA developer just simply goes here to our activities panel, identifies the machine learning service, this ML skill. We drag and drop that onto the canvas here. And just like that, I can now interact with the model that's up on AI Fabric called my license plate model. It's expecting as an input the file, which is a JPEG image of a car that I took of a license plate. And as an output, it's going to return to me the JSON with the red values from that particular license plate. And then I can just simply say, hey, read through 10,000 images of car license plates and then take that data and make it available to me in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheets because I want to mine that data and use it in some useful manner. All of that can be automated and the benefits of machine learning and deep learning can be used here to be able to actually deal with this new capability that our robots have, which is a skill to see what a human sees essentially on the screen. So I think I'm up against my time. Uh, hopefully you got a really good sense for the end-to-end -end aspects of our platform that we do have the ability to label and manage data labeling both for documents and we, uh, we can also perform that for image-based content founding boxes. We can automatically connect that labeled data into a training pipeline run through a data set and we can make it easy to automate these models into a workflow with uh, unattended and attended robots and further benefit from a human loop who can actually then improve that model over time by enabling a supervised learning capability.